featuring D'Addario's proprietary NY steel wire and our impossibly thin protective coating, XS Electric lets you bend further and play longer with a sound that stays timeless. That was great, man. Cool, thanks. Yeah, I, Just getting warmed up. I Oof. never knew where it was going. <laughs> that, Messing around. Hey, everybody, this is John Bollinger. I'm with Nir Felder. We're at the City Winery in Nashville. Nir is currently on a tour, and he's got this incredible band with you, man. I mean, you brought the heavy hitters with you. Yeah, I mean, in a way they brought me. It's, it's kind of a, a collective group with uh, Jeff Coffin from Dave Matthews Band, Will Lee. Who a lot of people know from the Letterman show, right? right? And we're going to interview him a little bit later. Yeah, on. he's going to do his very own rig rundown, which is going to be awesome, I'm sure. Uh, Jeff Babco, who plays with James Taylor, he's on the Kimmel Show, and Keith Carlock, who everybody knows from Steely Dan. Yeah. So wow. we, we all brought music, and uh, yeah, it's a fun little collective. Wow, man. Yeah. Well, I'm so glad that you took a minute to uh, to hang with us and talk about your rig. Why don't we start? It's really interesting because we were we were talking beforehand about like. I don't know. You're a jazz guitarist, but you're much more than that. And mm. jazz, as open as jazz is, it's a little limited, and you kind of do everything, you know. Mm -hmm. So, but it's interesting. You're on a strat the whole time. There's so few jazz guys on strats, but God, man, the voices you're getting out of her. Oh man, thanks perfect. so much, Sean. Uh, this Have is you actually been a strat guy. This is my first guitar. This is a '95 Tex Mex. Uh, that I got in 1996, and I've played it ever since. It cost $250 at Sam Ash in White Plains, New York. Wow. And uh, I've been playing it ever since, and I never changed anything. The only thing I did is, you know, my hero is Stevie Ray, uh, and I put on 13-gauge strings just like he did and tried to get that sound. So that's really, you know, other than just the amount it's been played, it's seen some, a few accidents here and there. Right, you yeah. Know, I, I, just, I love what you did to the, uh, <laughs> to the, to the tone Yeah, knob. this is just yeah. a little... You know, embellishment. Yeah. Um, but no, it's just it's just a stock strat that I've just been playing a lot. It's been played a lot, and you know, oh. the more guitars get played, they get a little bit of of the the life of the player in them. Totally. Well, that yeah, that is a lifelong friend. That's amazing. So, are you still running 13 gauge strings? Yeah, on these it? are 13s. You know, and they're you know the way it's set up. It's like. <laughs> Pretty bendable. Yeah. Well, for you maybe. Yeah, I don't it's, it's <laughs> a, it took some getting used to, but you know, it's all seems. This is a hard one. That, oh yeah. Um, that one could be tough, but yeah. Other than that, yeah. Wow, that is so cool. So, absolutely stock your first guitar. Totally. And that is your main go-to all the time. This is the one I pick up. I mean, I obviously have other guitars. I have you know great guitars that people have given me, and I love them all. I try to to play them all uh, in the studio, but uh, on the road, I usually just gravitate towards this because I just know it so well. Right. Um, and I just, I, honestly, I just love it. I love the way it sounds, I love the way it plays. Um, you know, sometimes I'm lucky enough to play these, you know, very expensive, great axes, and I'm always kind of like, well, it's great, but I love my Strat. <laughs> yeah, right, right. <laughs> it's funny, like, like, my most expensive guitars are not my favorite guitars. Right. It's just like whatever. Right. I mean, that's love, man. You love what you love. Yeah, you can't put a number on that. Yeah, exactly. Yep. When the heart wants what it wants. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's great. So what, okay, I'm curious. You're, you're just touring with this one, one guitar. Mm -hmm. um, how often are you changing strings and what, uh, what strings do you use? I use Diodario XLs. You know, Th those are great. They're fantastic. They? And I, I try to change them as often as possible, but, but honestly, it doesn't happen probably as much as it should. They'll stay on for a month for sure. Wow. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and 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 I do like something about that, the kind of the loss of the top end. But what you sacrifice is, is the intonation. Right. So so yeah. I do have to I have to you know sometimes I'll just change a high E and a B, just as soon as I hear that it's starting to, to slip. 
Right. Yeah. Uh, and there's nothing you can do about that. Yeah. But. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that this is going to be a very easy rundown. Okay. It's we got. Crazy. <laughs> we got yeah, do you ever break strings when you're out playing? Are you worried Man, about I'm, that? Man, I'm going to I'm going to break a string tonight because I'm about to say that I never break strings. <laughs> right. I, I, it's very exceedingly rare. Yeah. But um, I do have a I carry a spare set just in yeah, case. Yeah. You know. You just have. Have uh, Willie do the solo and you change and come back. <laughs> yeah, with this band, I, there's no problem. You yeah, know, yeah, they got to cover. Yeah, right. Okay, so that guitar and you're playing through a Fender Deluxe today, but uh, it's a backline. It's SIO. backline. Yeah, the, you know uh, these these Fender Deluxe 65 reissues are are just for me the perfect backline amp. Right. Um, at the volumes that I play at, I guess if I if I needed to play louder, I would probably go for a louder amp. But for like the the breakup that I want to get at a certain volume they're perfect right yeah. um, anything smaller would probably break up too soon anything bigger i just i would have to play too loud sure to get it to where i want it yeah is this a fairly loud band though this, when you're in full flight i imagine I, I will say about this band kind of pushes the limits of this amp yeah Some, sometimes i'm like wow i'm really just it's not getting louder it's just getting dirtier right um so you know i do have to be careful but in a room like this i could always just ask for a little more if i, I usually don't like guitar in the monitor but if i needed to i could get a little reinforcement it never sounds right in the monitor we're so we're, we're amp guys you yeah know, we're so used to I, it's, I, don't, I don't know if it's the horn or what but it never is never quite right yeah if I, I have a pair of I really love these JH um, Lola's that I have they're the I think slash helped develop them and so listening to guitar in my in-ears I much prefer to monitor because oh. they just have a really warm voice um, so I think that if you're gonna get a pair of in-ears those are really fantastic ones oh, okay yeah, Jerry Harvey Lola's okay yeah, yeah. good good mm -hmm. tip okay which gets us to the the last little tidbit is your Fairly modest pedal board. Yep, this is what I'm out with. I don't know if you guys can see. Um, so tell me, kind of bring me through the uh, signal chain, where you come in and, and how it's all flowing. Sure, so, um, you know, just a little disclaimer that like, it's, it's a little weird. You know, just like, <laughs> just like when I told you I've been playing this Tex-Mex Strat yeah. for, you know. It's every, okay, you know, uh, you're a jazz player. You could be a little weird. Well, everyone's got their own path to their sound, right? <laughs> right. You know, and like what works for, for you is not gonna work for this guy, and what works for that guy is not gonna work for me. And I think yeah. we all have to come to terms with that, that like copying someone's rig is not necessarily gonna get you the same sound, or oh, a sound that you like. Right, right. You know? So it kind of starts here with the guitar and the, and the heavy strings, right? Right. But the other thing that's a little bizarre um, for a lot of guitar players is my volume is not at 10. This, this volume knob is kind of, I think this is where the, kind of the jazz thing came in is like the sound of a, a saxophone or a trumpet. It's got a little bit of like its own kind of drive or dirt to it. Sure. It's not like a, a pure sine wave kind of right. thing. So um, what I'm doing to try to recreate that is I have two boost pedals right up front, two drives. I have an Ibanez Tube Screamer and I have a Klon KTR. And they're both on all the time. Really? They're both always on. But and the, it's so clean. Because the volume's pretty low. Oh. If the louder I turn up on this, so maybe I can show you a little bit. That's the volume on seven. Volume on eight. So that's the amount of dirt I'm playing with. But when I'm playing... When I'm playing at that volume, it doesn't really sound that dirty. But right. it does give you that little bit of like, it's not totally clean either. There's something there. Yeah, yeah it's just a, it's just body, I guess. Yeah, so that's kind of what I've worked out for, for this setting, right? Yeah. You know, in a diff on a different gig, I might be playing differently. But what I've kind of worked out is that my volume was between four and seven. And I have these two boosts that are giving it kind of that more like horn player kind of sound. But even yeah. when you play chords, it's still. Yeah, it's got some complexity to it. Yeah, it just has a little bit of edge to it and yeah. a little bit of warmth to it and a little bit of like natural compression to it. Right. So, yeah, that's great. Yeah. Now, um, I can't really see your settings, but where do you run your amp as far as like a, uh, like, you know, uh, bass treble? Oh, okay. Um, well, so on, on this one, to, to just to start with volume, it, it's like hovers between like three and a half to five and a half. Yeah. I it found, seems like above five, you just, it doesn't even get louder. It doesn't louder. get louder. It just, yeah, yeah dirtier. Um, so, on, on this amp, I would kind of probably do one or of two things. One is like kind of bass and treble fairly in the center, 
and like maybe bass just a touch hotter than treble. Uh, and the other one that I've started doing a little bit to just, because there's no mid control, right? Right. But sometimes you want, I found the closest thing I can get to like a little bit of a mid scoop is to dime the bass and treble and roll back. So like bass and treble start on 10 and then you roll back until you get a balance that has like a little less mid energy in it, low mid. Yeah. Uh, so I've tr experimented with that a little bit for a, a slightly brighter sound. It's funny, you'd think turning the treble up to 10 would make it super bright, but if you turn the bass up with it and start rolling back, it actually has just like this low mid scoop that is appealing in some contexts. Yeah. 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 Cool. Well, uh -huh. it sounds killer. Okay. Yeah. And it's interesting, you've got your tone all the way down on your on your tube screen. I do, but but then the treble on the KTR is, is kind of higher. Yeah. So they it's like, you know, pedal, they work together. It's right. like what might sound cool on one pedal by itself does not sound cool with it in context with the next pedal. So it's a lot of trial and error to find your unique specific thing that's going to work for you for the gig. Yeah. Do you, you find know? yourself sometimes tweaking them live? Oh, or? all the time. All the time. All the time. Yeah. Everything's, you know, that's the, that's even on a pop gig I've, I've noticed, like, you know, the best, sometimes the best pop musicians are more jazz musicians than some jazz musicians I play with, quote unquote, because they're reactive to the, the situation. You know, a different room, a different city, a different audience, a different night, right. different weather, you know, they're sensitive to that stuff and they adjust on a, it could, you could be playing the same set, playing the same, you know, arrangements every night, but you adjust on that micro level. Right. They're kind of sensitive to that. They're listening, they're feeling, they're using their intuition in that way. And that's a big part of what the, you know, being a jazz musician is to me is you, you're in the moment. Right. You're adjusting, you're listening, you're not, you know, just doing the thing because you got to do the thing. Yeah. You're saying, okay, it's going to be a little bit different tonight and I, I'm, I'm going to accept that and, and encourage that and roll with that. Yeah. Hitting the curveballs. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. yeah. That's great. Okay. So that's a, that's a surprising start, those two. Now, yeah. where do you go from there? <laughs> it's, you know, you might find this board a little boring because it is, it is kind of drive heavy. No, but I, I, I'm kidding. I love this stuff. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> this, uh, this kind of, this level of nerddom is, is oh, cool. that was okay. my bag. Okay. Yeah. Um, I was afraid I was, I was too basic. <laughs> yeah. um, so that's followed up by two, two drive pedals that are, are, are really, really wonderful and very special. Um, and the guy that makes them is one of my favorite guitar players too. You might know him, Jesse Davey. I, I don't know. He's a really wonderful guitar player um, out of, I think he lives in Ojai now, and he had a, uh, I was just texting about, about this the other night, uh, but he had a, a great band too, and you can, you can find them on YouTube. I'm spacing on the name right now because you know, we just traveled in today and sure, all yeah. that stuff. But, um, <laughs> but check him out, Jesse Davey, and he makes these pedals under the brand name King Tone. So I have the Duelist, which is a two-in-one. I'll, I'll give you both those in a second. And then the other one is an uh, octave fuzz called the Octoland. Those are great. But every, he, ma he makes one called the Blues Power that I love. Everything he makes is fantastic. He's really got a, a player's ear for, yeah. for tone. So that's what, this is what these sound like. So the basic sound. And then this is the, the first side of the Duelist. So it's yeah, kind of like great. blues breaker-ish. Even at a low volume. Even at a low totally volume, right? Yeah. yeah, and all these, you know, caveat is that we're not playing very loud now. So if I were to crank all this stuff up to some people, it would sound better. But I, I try to get it to sound good at every volume, Yeah. right? This is the other side of the Duelist. So that side, I might actually use more without this stuff I don't know why I'm playing blues and B flat that's kind of yeah. obvious yeah that's great that's the other side of that and then I'll kick these back on and you can hear the uh, the octoland Yeah, that's great. They're really fun. 
really fun. They're really fun, and, and they sound good by themselves, and, and I just encourage, you know, he's just kind of a small business owner and a great guitar player. I, you know, I can't say enough good things about him, so. Okay, so after, after the octave, what do you um, run into? So now we get in, into, like, a, a little bit of weird territory. This is Amer another company I love, Maris, and um, they make this thing called the Auto Bit, which... And, and that one, it sounds cool, really cool by its own, and also does some cool other stuff, but it sounds really beautiful in combination with something that's coming up later in the chain, which is the, the Strymon Big Sky. It's like pretty, but yeah. a little it, subversive. Right, it sounds like uh, music composed by AI. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Combined with a, with a line six that's also coming up, you get this. Yeah, that's... It's neat. It is neat. And I, I love the fact that it seems like you, that just goes where it goes. Like there's an element of like, uh, it's just going to do what it does. Yeah. And it might, it, might, it might be amazing. It might drive you crazy. Yeah, yeah. and, and it, it adds that little bit of like, what do they call it? Aleatoric, that like element of chance that you can't sure, control. Sure, yeah. So yeah, it's a good improviser's pedal and... Uh, yeah, I'm a big fan of, of Maris and all all their cool stuff. Yeah, well, um, that's cool. Yeah, and but you know that was it goes back to what we were talking about earlier about like combinations of pedals and how they work right. together, right? Like you can have a great great pedal, a great piece of gear, but if it doesn't work with what what else you're using, it's right. maybe not you know gonna uh, whatever. Yeah, no, you I, know I, what I'm I, yeah, I totally agree. Yeah, it's how it all works together. So let's talk about that line six. I, I had the big yep. one. I didn't even know they made a smaller one. They just, it just came out and I had to get it because um, I was so addicted to that that thing. I just couldn't get They're it off my- They're great, right? I've just had it for so long. We were just talking about this. Um, I've just had it for so long. I felt so comfortable with it and it has its own kind of sound. Like you, yeah. can, you can take that algorithm and put it in another pet, but it's not the same. Something mm -hmm. about probably the hardware and stuff. It just had a sound. Um, and one that I liked a lot, but it was heavy. It was, yeah. you know, took up a lot of real estate. Switches get a little glitchy. On oh, those. absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. So this this new upgrade, I, I, I went for it. And so far, I really love it. I, I, honestly, this is my second gig using it. It's got a lot of cool presets. There's a lot to explore there. So I'm, I'm just beginning my journey with it. Yeah. But super cool. So far, sounds great. Love it. Um, and then that's followed by Strymon Big Sky, which is, I'm not using for reverb. I have a reverb later in the chain. I'm more using it for cool, like, effects, like. My favorite is this detune patch, though. sounding yeah it really is um and then another plot twist it goes to another delay pedal sure why not right why not having those two delays going at slightly different rates it kind of seems to fill everything up a little bit like if i turn them both off or just the one but with the two of them it sounds most And then it ends with a Neunember reverb. Yeah, those wets, they're great. They're great. You know, it's really interesting. So essentially four overdrives, uh, three delays, a reverb, and a weirdo pedal. And that's, and that's Yeah, like, that's, I think of it as two delays, two reverbs, <laughs> two boosts, two drives. Do I'm doubling up on everything. Double it up, yeah. yeah. One guitar. Yeah, belts one and amp. suspenders, yeah, on your belt, yeah. <laughs> That's great. Well, hey, man, it sounds. And I, I know earlier today you're 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 using that polytune that. Oh right. Had a, had a we were having a little uh, travel catastrophe. Yeah. Well, yeah. These things, you know, I I travel in a. It, it's too bad that um, 
I'm actually having this board rebuilt by a guy in LA. Uh, he goes by the name Cute Rigs. Oh. Um, so I've been I've been hesitating on rewiring everything because I know it's about to get done in right. a couple of weeks. But uh, I, this this board, it, I have a great case from Stomping Ground Company out of North Carolina. So I've been checking that case, and it's been around the world for 15 years. Right. It's such a great case. It, it fell down a flight of stairs once, and it messed up the stairs. <laughs> you know? uh, but that said this tuner must have on this last flight down must have you know yeah. so the tuner is acting a little funny so come on tc electronics send this guy another one right away <laughs> can you get here by tonight <laughs> yeah yeah well congratulations man love your oh, play and love the whole thing and what a i we're going to talk to will in a little while it's an amazing band Thank you guys so much for, for having me, and uh, it's great to hang with you a little bit, man. Yeah. So. Cheers. Till next time. That was yeah. a Bootsy bass line, basically. <laughs> Fantastic. Yeah. We got Will Lee here with us. Will Lee, Grammy winner, Music Hall of Fame member. You all know him. He's been in your living room every night forever on uh, Letterman. And last time we saw you, uh, we did a rundown at Letterman. That's right. That was a lot of fun. Yeah. Uh, everybody got to do it. Sid McGinnis got to do it. Felicia yeah. got to do it for you guys. And it was, yeah, it the was whole, fun. The, the, whole, the dream team. I like it. I, a lot of people have watched that. Yeah. I, I like yeah. checking their stuff out because, yeah. you know, <laughs> those guys are gear nuts. Yeah, yeah, totally. Totally yeah. gear nuts. You, it's funny, you, you never seem like a gear nut. You, you, you uh, in fact. Uh, Which is interesting. Yeah, yeah. Like, I imagine you have a lot of gear. But, okay, like right now you're touring with one bass, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And tell me about this. This is my Sadowski WL model. And basically, Roger Sadowski always got it right from the beginning. So he, he's always had this gorgeous you know, design and gorgeous balance in mind and, and you know, something that feels really good in the hands. It's super roadworthy and all that stuff. Yeah. But I've always begged him to do a mid-range circuit. So after years of, of us like discussing this, he finally came around with a thing that actually does that adds the mid range, but doesn't take away from his normal preamp sound. Oh. So it gives you, uh, you know, all that classic Sadowski stuff, but a little bit extra honk in the middle. Yeah. You know, and for live gigs like this, when you want the sound to project way out into the room, or or when you're, uh, you know, in the studio and you're going for a certain thing. You have all these options, you know, so that it's got the mid-range circuit that you can on and off. I, I have it off right now, but it also has like, a, you know, we were talking about Jocko earlier. Right. And this is the same, the same width as Jocko's that's nut skinny, on his bass, yeah, that's you know, jazz. which yeah. I kind of like for articulation in the left hand a lot. Right. It also ships with a hip shot D tuner, which I tuned down to a C. Really? Ooh. Whoa, way Ooh. down there. Yeah, and, it's, and it works. At, you know, a lot of people call it, they call it the detuner. So people yeah. assume, oh, you tune it to a D. But no, you can kind of tune it yeah. almost to get the range of a five string, sure. basically. Yeah. So that's another reason that, you're, that I'm able to carry one bass, you know. Done, it does it all. It's like the meat and potatoes instrument. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's really yeah. good. That's, yeah, that's fantastic. It's pretty sweet. And so you're carrying that one bass and then going to backline amp. Uh, yeah, this um, is also my spec. It's my request was to have this the Aguilar 751 head, you know, and just a 410 bottom. Is that, and you've been using something similar like like that for for a long time. Since yeah, since the heart key yeah. stuff and That's right. and then Ampeg for yeah. a while. So I, I love the the way speakers move. The the 10 inch speakers move. Yeah. 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 Well, this this sounds fabulous. And, oh, it's and, a lot of fun. Yeah, and consistent everywhere you go you can just backline that and and have it so like, far so yeah. good so far so yeah. good and when we were talking before and you're saying 
you have a rig for every gig that you put together a board for whatever. <laughs> Lately, I've been doing that. Yeah. I got used to uh, for years. I, I, the last time I did, did the premiere rundown, yeah. uh, sort of explanatory session, um, at, was at Letterman, and we and at Letterman, you know, since we had to do so many different kinds of flavors, oh, it was impossible. Everything. You couldn't do a rig per gig, so you had to just have something that was extremely versatile, preset, you know, because you had to make quick moves like right. all day long. So I, I was using the uh, the Boss GT10B and it had all these, you know, like a hundred presets in the thing that I had designed for the show, yeah. for songs we were doing and stuff like that. But, uh, you know, looking at the, looking ahead at the next set list for the next upcoming gig, you kind of get a flavor of, okay, what am I going to need for this song, for that solo, for this section, stuff like that. So then you can sort of narrow it down to like just the sounds that you need. And, you know, I could have brought the, the multi-effects, you know, any one of the multi-effects things, but they have their ups and downs. Sure. You know, sometimes they cut corners in order to fit everything inside, you know. Yeah. So, so you can get, a, I think you can get sort of fatter sounds with individual pedals, you know. Yeah, and tweak on the fly. That's what's kind And of nice do a little too. bit of that too, yeah, and combine on the fly and all that stuff. So for this gig, I just, uh, you know, pared it down to like an, a beefy octave thing. Oh yeah, the Pog, okay. You know? Right. It's almost like you feel that more than you hear it. You know? Yeah, in this case, this is the Pog, which, which, you know, somebody pointed out to me yesterday, what are you repping, elect electroharmonics? And I, I didn't realize that I had chosen the Pog and two other EHX They pedals. make amazing gear. And they're, uh, and Always they're have, right. yeah. yeah. And they're right out of New York, so. Uh, yeah. yeah, and Mike Matthews has been a friend since oh, forever. That dude is, that guy's amazing. Yeah. yeah. So there's another song that we have in our, in our set list that was written by Jeff Babco, and it's called Chuckles. And for the record, I, I tried to give it its own sort of sound. And for years I was doing like, uh, you know, during the days of Dreams and the Brecker Brothers, I kind of got known for the envelope sound because there was a gorgeous pedal called the funk machine they used to make that oh. now now neil jason is involved with uh re you know putting that back out again what's the word for it redistributing re yeah revamp re uh, re, re, uh, re, 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 re release me let me go <laughs> anyway yeah he's doing that and uh so so the this thing is one of my favorite sound <laughs> So there's that. Oh, that's great. For that kind of stuff, which I love. Now, did you put a cover over it so it wouldn't see so you move from your settings? There's a great guy in New York named Yik Wong. And Yik made a cover so that when I stomped on it with my big clumsy feet, <laughs> it wouldn't change any of the settings. Because, you know, like in the way an octave uh, is sensitive to how much volume goes in, there's right. a sensitivity switch on, on most envelope filters too. So, you know, if it's opened up too wide, you don't get any wow, you just get the ah. Right. You know, and you want it to wow, responding to your touch. Right. I even used to call these the wow, wow pedals. <laughs> but this guy, yeah, this guy, this, this, little, this little cowl over it, you know, is, is like a, you know, safety first. Yeah, it's a great, yeah. It's like the, those goggles the, when you're in the shop. <laughs> right. Yeah, because in the heat of battle, you really are stopping. Absolutely, and yeah. I'm very clumsy. <laughs> so, okay, there's so that groove. That's great. I love that thing. And, you know, it, we have a couple of songs. We haven't even started really incorporating them yet, but the Canyon pedal that, that Electro harmonic, Harmonics makes is... gives you that thing. Oh god, that's great. It's like an ensemble. And for a weird for a weird sound. <laughs> oh, so you get all that kind of groovy weirdness. 60s stuff. science fiction. I love and that. And that's my story. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's great, and one and a one spot to uh, power it all. That's yes, easy. Jeez, so easy. Yeah, that and amazing talent. Just add water and it, you know, <laughs> it, yeah, it, it's, it builds back up. You can you know you can pack it into like one of those vacuum bags about this big. 
Sure. As soon as you put the water in, it's sure. ready to go. Sure, yeah. Yeah, all of that. Yeah, yeah. well, Will, that is fabulous. I, I, uh, you're doing so much with just that stuff. Well, but straight in. I've man. got some it's professional just... help. If, as, if you stay for the show, you'll see, you know. Oh, this is a great I'm man. surrounded by unbelievable players. Man. Yeah, These no, guys are the greatest. Do you guys play around New York all the time together? Is that This band? band? Yeah. Uh, but only I mean, but, I mean, only the near lives in New York. Different, different. Uh, but but the but the players. Do you work together in different projects together? I, mean, I imagine you're all. Yeah, the, I mean, know. I've had Jeff do a, a thing for me. We do this, this concert every year called Love Rocks, oh. and I'm the musical director for that. And I hired Jeff one year, and he was amazing for the horn section. Near and I have done a few things. I got to use him for a, a, another concert called Nearness of You <laughs> that raises money for uh, this great cause, the, the disease that killed my friend Mike, Mike Brecker. Yeah. And it's, uh, it's uh, MS, it's called uh, Multiplastic, uh, I can't think of the name, of, oh, it's MDS for short, Multidisplastic Syndrome. And of course, Keith and I do stuff all the time. Yeah. We're gonna be playing with Christopher Cross together soon. Really? <laughs> yeah. How great. Yeah, and we have another group called Toxic Monkey with Steve Lukather and, <laughs> and uh, Bill, uh, Bill Evans, who's going to sit in tonight. Really? By coincidence. Oh, yeah. And Babco is just Babco. Yeah, you, you, see, know. you see that guy everywhere. Yeah. Yeah. For good reason. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you, you, you guys really are the usual suspects. You see, you see. <laughs> I'm getting tired of me, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Well, Will, thanks for meeting us today. Great yeah, man. hearing you play. Thank you. Yeah. Sure, thank you. Thank you, guys. Okay, till next time. All right.